Hey up everybody, I hope you're all well and happy and uh, you're really going for it with your real recovery and that it's a nice day for you wherever you are. It's Sunday here in Middlesbrough, it's blowing a gale, but at least it's sunny so it's quite nice. Um, today's brief chat is going to be something that um, a good good friend of mine, so hi, you'll know who you are, asked me to have a, a go at thinking about and it's to do with the idea of the different stages there is with meal plans and how we potentially come off a meal plan when we're all also in that stage of recovery where we've still got to make sure we're gaining weight. Um, now, I was asked this question quite a while back and I must admit I've been thinking about it an awful lot because it, it's a really important and it's crucial one. And it's quite tentative and, and there are a lot of potential approaches to it. And, and as I always say, this is just my ideas. There's nothing scientific about this. This is just my experience and my ideas and some of the things that, that if you wanted to, you could use or you or suggestions to you, really. Um, I think one of the things about the meal plan is that I was given a meal plan. I was given, well, I've had numerous meal plans and I was given my first ever meal plan when I was as an inpatient it's the first time i would ever come across the idea of a meal plan and i must admit it, it it yes it saved my life first and foremost but i must admit it is what actually started my my journey and my difficulties with measuring and pouring and weights and amounts and being allowed a set amount because the minute that i was given that meal plan then that anorexia thought in my head was all about well that's all you can have and I know meal plans are supposed to be a minimum but anybody out there that 100% has, has lived with this illness will know that the second that anyone puts a number on something your illness tells you that that's absolutely all you're allowed to have and you'll have that to the absolute the absolute calorie um so meal plans started and created quite a lot of the behaviors for me that I then had to actually spend years trying to break um but they serve a really important role to start off with. So they do start to make you familiarise yourself with food again. They do start to make you become less samey. They do start to help you get out of that cycle of, of the spin of decision and choice because you obviously have to choose things beforehand and what have you. But I think one of the big, big traps, so the, the first trap with meal plans for me is that it starts off the behaviours to do with weighing and measuring. But I think a second one of the traps for me is that to do with the fact that I've heard, and I know I've said it myself, and I've heard a lot of people say, oh, well, I need to stick to my meal plan because I need to know I'm having enough. And I question that because the second that we're putting anything that, that means that we are controlled by an amount of something means that we're in eating disorder territory. You know, we're not in recover land. We're in eating disorder territory because we're saying to ourselves, right, I need this thing, this device. I need these calculations to tell me that I'm having enough but what actually I think that is, I think that's anorexia saying, because you're not allowed anymore. So therefore, it really hangs on to the need of a meal plan and the need to speak to someone about having a meal plan and how much am I allowed to have? Because you anorexia, your illness is craving permission just to eat that tiny, tiny amount. Um, I would argue, and I fling back to anyone that says, I need a meal plan so I know I'm eating enough. I'd fling back to you the fact that actually... I know I'm eating enough because my weight will go up. And that is so important that we get up here in our heads. Your weight is supposed to be going up in anorexia recovery. It's the point of doing it because in that low, 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 low weight, you're dying. So therefore, our weight needs to go up. So I'll know I'm eating enough because my weight will increase. I know I'm eating enough because my bra won't fit as well and I'll need a new bra. I know I'm eating enough because my hair will stop falling out. So I'll look at my brush and my brush won't be full of dead hairs. I know I'm eating enough because the skin on my hands won't be cracked and sore. I know I'm eating enough because it'll stop. It'll start to stop hurting when I'm sat down. So what, what I'm saying is if you're in that moment, that period where you, you feel like you're trapped with that meal plan because you're thinking, well, if I get rid of it, I won't know I'm eating enough, then your body will give you a million signs if you're not eating enough, i.e. it won't repair itself, you won't get well. The other thing that I really, really did in terms of the meal plan is that I joined together, I coincided my behaviour shifting to do with weighing and measuring and, and free point with coming off my meal plan. So I said to my care team, look, if I'm going to deal with trying to break the behaviours to do a feel free porridge and not weigh my stuff at home, I need you to get rid of my meal plan. Or I need you at least to say, look, 
you've got to have like three meals and three snacks a day but whatever they are and however big they are or or whatever the percentage and proportion of things are that actually you just need to help me figure out what that will look like um because to have a meal plan that said to have 200 milliliters of milk whilst also trying to deal with free point that it was it was in congress the two were never going to work together so i spoke to my care team in the first instance and they agreed that actually yeah let's just let's just go for it so i would you know i'd still put my meal my, my ideas down on the sheets and things that i need to do at day service but i was allowed to just kind of free pour them and and, and not measure them and that's hard it is really hard but you can do it um, I know my family were a little bit wobbly when I first came off my meal plan because I think in their heads that was keeping me in inverted commas safe. I knew though that actually the meal plan was keeping me trapped. It was keeping me in my illness because I wasn't being able to push through it and, and, and really kind of expand it. But we just then made sure that we were always kind of helping each other out. So if you are going to start to think about coming off your meal plan, which has to, it is a massive stage of recovery and so very important, you do need to get people around you or you need some sort of mechanism to support you to make sure who's in control when food's being made. So I then, for instance, I only ever bought, you know, pre-sliced bread, pre-packaged porridge, um, not the bullshit pot porridge, by the way. Also, you know, the golden syrup ones in the packet that are, you know, a decent amount. Um, I only got like snacks that were grab and go snacks in so like you know a galaxy cake bar as opposed to a piece of cake that you cut up because that just gives anorexia a chance to have a little tiny meany weeny teeny teeny slices um the big a big real challenge and I know it's really tough but it's so important was to say you know to my husband I need you to portion my food I need you to put the food on the plate um and that given that control over yeah initially it's a bloody nightmare but you do you do get over it and you you do start to accept and acknowledge and then it was right like, now I'm ready to portion myself but I need you to help me make sure I am portioning it you know um so I do I th so therefore in a nutshell to make to make this a brief chat and not one that could last all night because I could talk about this all night is to really double up your behaviours. So if you're going to come off your meal plan, then match it with learning to stop measuring and pouring things and stop writing things down. Because if you if you are keeping measuring and, and, and um, weighing things out and are keeping a tally of calories, then you might as well be on your meal plan anyway because you know fine well that the maths is going to be going up here, whether it's written down or not. So you've got to combat the, the two behaviors at once then also be thinking about this is not about i have to have a meal plan because i need to make sure i'm having enough because your body will tell you if you are not having enough you know if your boobs are getting bigger if you're getting stomach cramps again because your periods are starting if your hair is is like this look look it's crazy 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 hair but crazy hair is good hair because it's healthy hair if your eyes are sparkling if that grayness has gone off your skin if you can't see your veins in your arms then that's your body telling you that you're having enough food and that's what you've got to do you've just got to make sure that you kind of keep eating and look at the signs yourself on your own body to tell you that you're having enough if those things aren't changing in your body and you can still see the veins in your arms and your hair is still falling out and you do still look grey, then you're not eating enough. And, and that's all you need to know. That's the only thing you need to look at. I will do some more, I think, to do with kind of weighing and measuring. I do have some videos on YouTube and on my Instagram um, TV, bits and pieces that talk about weighing and pouring and stuff. And I've done some little examples in the kitchen. But if that if anyone would find that helpful, I'll do some more to do with like what, you know, getting your eye in. Because that's super important. Get your eye in as to what um, a normal person's portion would look like. But then if your body's telling you you want seven times more, then you have seven times more. Because remember, you're trying to lose weight. You're trying to put on weight that you should never have lost in the first place. That's the big thing to get into your head. But I'm more than happy to do more things that people want. Um, but I hope that kind of gives you a little bit of a of a starting point. But get in touch on on Instagram or email me, louisa at louisarecovery.com. And um, we can have a, a bit more of a chat about it. Take care, everybody. See you soon.